So this particular recording is both really exciting and really frustrating because it's the first episode and we had an absolute blast. It was so much fun. And at the same time, the audio was totally jacked up for this episode, for the recording of it. Luckily, I guess, the mic that I was using, which was just like a little earbud mic that you'd use on a phone or something like that, is terrible. So I wasn't recording the audio track for the players correctly. It didn't save into the uh, OBS file that I was using. But the mic was so bad and the headset was so bad that I could, you can kind of hear them through my earbud in the mic that I was using. So you can kind of hear them on my audio track. So I have painstakingly gone through and tried to amplify that audio. So this is ugly. I will concede this ugly. It gets better in the later episodes, and I just want to be able to hear what want people to be able to hear what, the, what everybody's saying. So we had, we had a great start on episode zero. We screwed up episode one. Episode two gets weird in a different way. Three... Eventually, we sort our crap out, and it's all better. But this is what's wrong with here. We know it's wrong. It's not going to stay this way, so please don't think that you have to go through this hell every single time. So I apologize for that, but at least you'll be able to hear everybody mostly. And I tried to level out the sound, so you, if you're listening to this on headphones or something, you're not going to get blasted out when it switches back to me and you can hear me. This audio file has unfortunately been compressed within an inch of its life, so the quality is not going to be great. Sorry about that. Hopefully, the stuff about the game itself will still be entertaining and fun. So, without further ado, cue the music. Okay, kids, and by that I mean young heroes, we're going to get this party started with, I don't even know what to look at, I'm just totally confused. Um, all right, so thank you all for all of the awesome stuff that you have been doing uh, with regards to all your characters this week, it's been awesome, so after the things, the session zero last week, you guys have just been... Honestly, it's astonishing how much forum stuff there is already uh, for this game. And Say that again? Yes, because some of the people wrote up interviews. <laughs> Honestly, that, I mean, some of the stuff you're not seeing because, like, it's being sent to me directly, but Dave, Dave hasn't been that far ahead in terms of contributions compared to uh, other people. And I... Uh, it's okay. You you filled out enough. You you gave me lots of useful information, and the Gale family will certain fa- certainly, as a result, factor heavily into uh, everything that's going on. So, very exciting. What did we? What do we have up here on the desktop? Is this Adam Omari? Oh, I'm looking at this picture up here. This little sketch. Oh, I must have drank that accent. Sorry. Yeah, I love it. The little cape and. Yes, it's a scarf. Well, the scarf, right? The scarf that with the sparks coming off it and stuff. I love it. Yeah, that was a. That's totally it. There you go. There's Concord. So, um, it's been about two-ish weeks since the events surrounding your Derby showdown with Hannibal Electric. Kudos to Bill for coming up with that name. Yeah, yeah. Little, little, little claps. Uh, and. We're gonna we're gonna jump into an action sequence in Media Res really quick here. But before we do that, um, I uh, your, your your lovely and loving editorial staff have written each of your characters love letters. Concern. 
you, you should be concerned. You should absolutely be concerned. So I think, and now Dave, you'll have to test me on this. I'm going to cancel and I'm going to edit this and I'm going to show this to Dave. And I'm going to say save changes. Does a thing suddenly pop up on your screen or no, Dave? Okay. Oh, there he is. I see it. All right, should, character love letter, Quill. Yes, it will continue to be. It will be, yeah. The next one I might just make available, visible to everybody. Um, so, what did you do? Uh, what is, what is, I got to see what those. <laughs> continue. Concerned. Uh, very, very nice. I love it. I love it. We're starting, we're starting out early with concern. Yeah. All right. So, actually, I think I'll just. If it's all right with everybody, I'd like to share these just with everybody because they'll be kind of a kick for everybody, I think. So what I will do is I will show to players. Oops. Show to players. Or maybe it doesn't want me to. Show to players. Edit. I'll just do it this way. Hang on a second, Dave. We'll be right back. Show to players. Show to everyone. There, now everybody should see it. Dear Jason, it's been several weeks since your uh, confrontation with Hannibal Electric, and as you have carefully so carefully, gotten the Quill Labs AI to analyze the effect Electric's bioelectricity had in your nanites, as well as pursue all of your other responsibilities. Roll plus superior. On a 10 plus, pick two. On a 7 to 9, pick one. On a miss, on a miss, pick one, but some potentially dangerous bit of Quill tech has also gone missing from corporate inventory. What is it? Why is it dangerous? And who do you think might have taken it? Love and kisses, editorial. Go ahead. Uh, by the way, I can... Okay, it's you're in there. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Yeah, should it come up? But I can roll forward too. Seriously, roll for Ghost Girl. I, I it's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Superior. I can hardly wait. Oh dear, that actually that it actually says oh dear next to the two, doesn't it? It actually does say oh dear. If I remember correctly, I actually went into the code for this page and changed the result so it said oh dear next to it. On a miss. Pick one, but some potentially dangerous bit of quill tech has gone missing from corporate inventory. What is it? Why is it dangerous? And who do you think might have taken it? But you also get to select one of the three options above. The AI research revealed some potentially useful applications for overcharging your nanites after you got shocked with the bioelectricity. You, or you managed at Ms. Joseph's urging to shore up your standing with the trustees of the Quill Foundation. Or your investigations, a.k.a. Cron Strong and his Mountain.exe, an automated search program you hacked together indicates Alicia Chin is back in, Hel- in Halcyon City. So pick one of those and also answer those questions. We're not going to wait. We're just going to, while, while you ponder the ramifications of your love letter, um, and in fact, I, what I will do, Dave, is I'm going to add that you can edit this. Uh, so after the love letter, like put in a hard, a hard break or something like that and, and write in what you end up doing. And questions and stuff. So I have it for. You should be able to edit now. You may need to close it and reopen it or something, but you should be able to edit it now. Okay. So that's love letter number one. Going in alphabetical order here. Uh, mm, mm, uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I think you do. I, I, I absolutely think I should. I, I, I think you should mark potential. By all means, mark potential. Because that was, I mean, really. Well done starting out the mask game with a flat out two. To be fair, some of you guys are not rolling on your strongest stats. That, that is true. That was not my stat. For example, Concord. No, wait. Yeah, Concord. All right. Dear, Dear Conk. Oh, I forgot to. You know, it should be a little break there. I forgot, I forgot one of my line breaks. Mike, go ahead and give it to me. Dear Conk, it's been several. Some heroes took the new and some that fancy abortion. Since then, my mom and dad have been a little less freaked out, especially since the game connection. Roll Monday. <laughs> on a 10 plus, pick two. On a 7 to 9, pick one. On a miss, pick one, but all this super hearing has left your little sister really out of sorts. Uh, let's see. On a 7 to 9, pick one. Let's see. How is it totally awesome? And what did you know your folks wouldn't like? Or... You've been unexpectedly scheduled for a public appearance by the Gales, but got a little coaching how to handle it again by the Gales. What maybe useful advice did they give you before you tune them out? And finally, you've been having scary dreams, but they're starting to make a little more sense. It feels like the Concordance wants an agent here on Earth for a reason. What dream images can you remember that hint at that purpose? 
So you go ahead and you go ahead and ponder that, and and good job not rolling a two. Uh, I know. Although I did I did like uh, that you know on a miss pick one, but all this super hearing lift your sister out of sorts. Your parents aren't saying it's your fault because she misses you, but they aren't not saying it really clearly. Tell us what super responsibility you neglect to spend some time with her, and what do you do with the borrowed time? But luckily, you dodged that bullet. I think I might still have that as fallout in some other role, though, because I mean, really, that's just that—that's—that's that's the gift that keeps on giving. That particular one. I'm gonna. I, I have to read this one for for Harry, though, because. Are you ready, Mercury? Sure. Here we go, dear Mercury. It's been two. Oh, I forgot the little sign-off though for Concord, which was. Oh, it actually, I didn't save it right in here. It should have been um, Cosmic Cuddles editorial. Oh, uh, this one. Uh, Dear Mercury, it's been two weeks since that fight with the Hannibal Electric and the way your folks are acting. You'd think they you'd won the lottery and gotten accepted at MIT on the same day. You used to help them helping out with your life, but now it looks like they've got a whole new batch of kids your age to quote unquote coach. The team's not going to know what hit them. Roll savior on a 10 plus pick two on a seven to nine pick one. Your options. Uncle Chase mentioned Hyena was very impressed with the team up against Electric at the family dinner. Mom and Dad were not pleased, but you snagged your uncle later and let him know that you really wanted to meet her. Your family, and by extension the HHL, is asking a lot of questions about Link. What piece of information about Link did you intercept before your family saw it? And finally, you thought your family made a big deal of your heroic destiny, but Adam has caused more closed-door meetings in two weeks than the first time Transcendent went evil and took over the moon. On a miss, pick one, but you totally pulled parent aggro. Editorial will tell you what they guilted you into during your make, dur- t- guilted you into doing to make up for your meddling. High speed hugs and kisses. Editorial. Harry's actually good at savior, though. Oh my god, he's really good at savior. Look at that. Woo. So you you pick two of your options. Uh, read the full thing because you have questions to answer. Um, I will also change this thing so you can edit it and put notes down after the letter part. Uh, Catherine. There we go. There's Mercury. Save changes. So you should be able to edit that as well. I forgot to do that for Mike. I will do that for Mike. For Concord. Edit. And Mike can do that. Save changes. So Mike, you should be able to edit that to make any answers to any questions. And finally, everyone's favorite robotic expert. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't write. My my daughter was very upset because I was sharing these with her, and she all she wanted to hear was Ghost Girl stuff. And I didn't write one for her because she's not here tonight. Uh, she will get one. Link. It's been like how I don't do a dear link for you. Link. It's been it's been several weeks since your confrontation with Hannibal Electric, and you've been preparing yourself as well as you can for the new public heroics that you won't admit you're looking forward to. Roll freak, on a ten or higher, pick two, seven to nine, pick one. Quills nanites are pretty wicked tech. Numa says he's told people in interviews that he doesn't really understand them. Obviously, lying to throw off his enemies. You've run some theoretical models. In what ways would these nanites enhance your tech, or and in what or in what ways are sorry, and in what ways are they dangerous to your tech? Uh, option two, Agent Waters got in touch after the thing with that asshole electric. You couldn't tell if Aegis was happy about what happened or pissed, or maybe they were pissed and Waters was happy. Uh, finally, you and Numa managed to corner and interrogate a D-list thug who was armed with one of your dad's weapons. What unexpected thing did they reveal to you about the source? And why was Numa upset after the encounter? On a miss, pick one, but your tech made the news before you were ready. Someone recognized you from the derby footage and now knows who, what, or where you are. Who was it? Who besides you does that put at risk? And how long do you think you have until the cape hits the jet intake? Hugs and kisses, editorial. Did that similarly work? I wanted to go with shit hits the fan, but cape hits the jet intake was just so much better. <laughs> uh, oh, Leo. Well, that's good because... Uh, Potential! I know, I, I know in advance what my answers will be. I could just do you now if that's okay. <laughs> Google Plus. Oh, you see, I I saw you plus one of the things. I'm like, well, uh, Bill has already prepped for this by the time he gets here. So you can pick one of the options up above, and you can also uh, do the thing. You also need to do the thing down at the bottom. What do you? What, what are your answers? So which ones do you pick? Uh, so I'm going to answer um, Agent Water. 
Oh, okay. So what piece of advice or food did he share? Um, I'm going to say there's a couple things. One, that Aegis was apparently present at the Derby because Hannibal Electric was there to stir up chaos while another villain did a real game. Uh-huh. Either, either Waters doesn't know or whatever. But just like there was someone else there. Watch out. I'm sorry. Um, he, he has a... He has an... Uh, Link has an Aegis handler. Um, and yeah, right, 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 right. Waters left in a left a hint that uh, Aegis was on site because while Electric was there and active, there was another entity there taking advantage of the Sone Chaos to pull off the real thing, whatever the real thing was. And so Aegis is half, pre- I guess they're half pissed and half impressed because the thing happened, but also the other thing happened. It might go well with you. Well, there you go. Uh, Bill, I just saved. Scroll down, maybe? Did you did you hit save? Maybe I hit Yeah, maybe. Uh, what was your... Oh, so that was your option in the middle. Uh, what was the... So in the miss, your tech made the news, but you weren't... Before you were ready, someone recognized you. Who, who was it? Who besides you does this put at risk? And how long do you think you have until the cape hits the gen intake? Uh, so I don't know who it was. It was the actual villain uh, undertaking the actual caper. Oh, okay. I can tell you what they saw. Uh, they saw at the car show uh, a bunch of kids hanging out with these cars, but they happened to see that car take off. And the- oh, I see. One of these house kids wearing the varsity jackets, <laughs> one of the heroes. They just don't know. Okay. It's at risk. Everybody. Oh, I love my players so much. Uh, how long do we have? Um, it's probably going to take like several weeks to trace and trail all the kids, uh, depending on this villain's work. So it could be. Okay. I love it. Love it so much. Good stuff. I, I feel like I should be taking down these notes, but uh, okay. So that's good. All right. So what put it put at risk? Varsity players at Helsing on high. I love it. All righty. So do, do, do. Anybody else? Anybody else ready? Uh, I am Concord. Concord, what you got for me? Ah, so I chose... Oh, you lined them out. Look at you look, being all efficient. So I chose... There was an unexpectedly scheduled... Or unexpectedly scheduled where I imagine he talked to the press and the heels kind of went... Um, so what I want... Wait, wait for a second. What I want you to do is tell me what the advice was because that, that thing has not happened yet. Oh, okay. So... The advice you do. Don't tell everybody. <laughs> no matter what. Um, all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So. They, they actually told you a bunch of other stuff. They basically had a bunch of if-then contingency statements for like every possible weird thing that could happen in a, in a television interview. Uh, but you tuned them out uh, before it all just turned into Charlie Brown, like adult trombones. Yeah. <laughs> Like remarkably quickly, or maybe not that remarkably quickly. All things considered. No, it's remarkably quickly. <laughs> uh, he is thirteen and three four. All right. All righty. So we've got that. We don't need this right now. I don't think. Maybe I do. And I want that. I'm just pulling some stuff out here that I need. All right. Okay. I did hit save changes. Hang on. I'm looking. Oh. Wait, I'm looking at... What am I looking at? Do, do, do. Uh, it's right there. Yeah, I can see. Really? Okay. My search route. Do you have to scroll? I'm not seeing the change. Expand the... This is... Are, are you looking at yourself or are you looking at the love letter? I'm looking at the love letter. All That's right. I wrote the My search routine determines that Alicia definitely is back in town. Rumor is that she is associated with Hannibal Electric. Either as part of his attack or perhaps breaking him out. Which would explain those low-level EM pulses detected near Free Scott Prison, where Electric is, to which he could which he could detect. I should have added, which is why they potentially oh break, break him. Ah, I see. Which damn it might be because someone, almost certainly Alicia, has stolen an EM pulser that Doctor Quill invented a prototype of, which can create all sorts of subtle pulses, or if turned to a twelve, could black out the whole city. Love it. I can see it. I don't know exactly why you can't. Yeah, that's that's just darn weird. Why? But I can see it, and I see your answers, and uh, that is very interesting. That is very, very interesting. 
I don't know if she was the one that was at the thing, but okay, I, I I'm very interested in why Alicia would find him useful. But actually, if you take him and combine him with the EM pulse gun, oh my goodness gracious, that would be bad. Well, it's also possible if, if I was following... You talk about somebody who could turn links, this... Links uh, properly. If there was some indication that... The, the, the thing at the Derby was a, if not a distraction, taken advantage of as a distraction for somebody who was doing something at the Derby that was not having to do with just, ah, okay. yes. So I don't know if that answers your question or not, but that's what's going on. It does. Do, do, do. Oh, I'm picking on the wrong person here. And we have that answered from Concord. And Mercury, what do you think? You had you had several things to pick. Try again later. What's that? Reply hazy. Try again later. <laughs> okay. You keep le- you let me know when you're ready. All right. So uh, thank you for participating in Lovers. Uh Bill, I'm assuming you marked potential. Yes, I did. Oh, good. Well, there you go. You guys are one fifth of the way to an advance already. We haven't even you know. Uh, just so you guys know, there's a little mark right above my little icon there that's got a number one in it. That's your total, total t- current total of points in the team pool. Um, it indicates sort of it, it, it indicates sort of the strength of the team bond currently. I can't remember if it resets at the end of the game. I don't know if it does or not. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. I don't think it does. Um, it's really, really useful. I love the mechanic for it because you don't have to do it. If you want to help in a situation, you don't have to roll any dice and hope that you roll well enough for your help to be helpful. You just spend a point out of the team pool and describe how you're helping, and the helping helps by giving them a plus one. Um, I think the total number of points cannot get the total bonus to the roll up above a plus four. But other than that, you could have, like, and everybody on the team could chip in and all help one person to roll, and four people could give a guy a plus four on the whatever, theoretically. If he didn't have any other bonuses whatsoever, could still get up to a plus four with, like, four other people helping. Assuming that there's a way for them to help. They can't help if they're, you know, across the city on the other side of the world, whatever. Uh, there isn't any logical way for them to help. But if they can help, they can help. Uh, which ironically makes uh, Link pretty good at helping since he's got extra. Many hands make easy helping. Um, so, you know, there's any other last minute stuff? Are we ready? Are we ready to to, to move into the uh, the action sequence? Not done yet. All right, we'll give you a minute. Uh, I'm gonna run down and grab a soda real quick. Actually, it's probably not helping. I'm just gonna go out on the limb and say it's probably not. Helping. Not helping. <laughs> I'm going to say not helping, and she's the one person in the game who can throw shit at you. So, uh, okay. I'll be right back, and then we'll we'll hop in. All right. Um, working my way around the table while Catherine puts her, puts her thoughts together. Um, Dave, um, after great and lengthy consideration, your... Your 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 foundation's advisor. What was her name? Not Jenkins. Oh, Jens- Josephs. Josephs. I knew it was a J name. Um, you had gotten word that there was a new challenge for the team, and after some deliberation, which wasn't necessarily welcome, but or at least not openly welcome, uh, Josephs actually recommended that you undertake this new challenge. She thought um, doing something like this with the team. Would be it might be dangerous. It, it definitely carried some risk, but she thought she encouraged you to get in touch with the rest of the team and coordinate your strategies for this for this new challenge. Uh, and in fact, made the resources of the of, of the foundation available to a certain degree, to a certain limited degree, in case there was anything that you needed. Certainly, please ask that sort of thing. Um, a great first step in this, this undertaking that you seem bound and determined to take. So you have, I'm being deliberately vague here, you have a daunting and challenging uh, uh, team challenge coming up here with, uh, the, uh, um, with a, a lot of trepidation in your heart about it. Do you reach out to anybody else in the team or simply, you know, meet up at the preordained location 
and hope for the best? And if so, who do you reach out to? Uh, what sort of preparation, that sort of thing, coordination, maneuver, so, maneuver sevens, that sort of thing. Right, and I realize you I am being deliberately vague because it'll be funny. Deliberately vague. Um, I, it's the alternative that I just say, hey, everybody, let's meet up at... You could simply say, well... Where, where, wherever it is, reaching out to someone. The, the location has been delivered unto you. Um, so that's a, you, you could basically what you would be indicating basically is I'll be there, you know, like you're, you're, you know, um, or actually going further to say, I'll be there. And if you guys are coming, we should totally like compare notes and make sure that we don't make, you know, fools of ourselves. I'm absolutely to the latter going to just say, Hey everybody, or I'm not going to just say, Hey everybody be at point X without any preparation. Okay. Who do you, who do you. I, out of curiosity, I'm going to ask this of uh, uh, Link. Who did you get that text message from that you wrote in that one thing? Like who, in your head, who was it? In my head, I have an answer, but um, I was just curious who you thought was texting you. I left it deliberately vague. So it should have been honest. Uh, if you need a default, I would quill. Because to me, it felt like Concord, like the kind of thing that Concord. Then it is. But but I got I got like if Mike would have sent the, you. Do you know which message I'm I'm talking about mike not off top of my hair all right so he got a text message yeah yeah it's, it's over in the the uh uh forum it was like an, an in-character thread for like how old is everybody and i don't need that one. Oh, that text yeah oh jason probably has much much less speeds. yeah that's what that's mostly what struck me was is, is jason doesn't really talk like that but it totally looked like it was up the alley of like it looked to me like the kind of text messages that a kid would send when he's not near adults and he's like really kind of feeling his oats so it's like in my mind concord is sending this text while him and harry are hanging out and nobody's watching when he's trying to look cool yeah so he's like i'm dude i'm gonna text links your folks said they've got a contact number or something. I'm going to totally text him. Like, dude, don't text him. No, I'm going to text him. Check it out. <laughs> like, that's that's how I see that whole conversation going. Anyway. Um, oh, that doesn't, that isn't what I want to have it. That uh, doesn't matter. I'll do it this other way. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Got that. Um, so you, I mean, I don't, how much, I got to add, this is a, sort of a question for the group how much communication have you guys really been in in the last couple of weeks i mean harry and harry and uh and and al sorry adam have been um talking have been in contact and stuff like that but how much have the rest of you guys really been in in touch have you actually met face to face or anything like that well you know suggested it back said hey you know we i've got this big weekend get together chat but i don't know that anybody's come up on that and i can yeah i'll send some text messages back and forth. Uh, i don't get the sense that, that we were necessarily that yeah so, it's, what? it's been talked about we're teenage boys yeah i mean the first question would have been do you have like an xbox or a ps4 i've got this thing my dad was prototyping <laughs> it's, it runs everything it runs everything and some other stuff it's actually not supposed to be able to run um I, I, I have worried sometimes I'm doing first person shooters that I'm actually shooting things somewhere, so I don't play it anymore. <laughs> well, there you go. That's all you need to get Harry and probably also uh, Adam there. Any first person shooter that that's realistic is where that. What about Link? I got a car. You, you, right. I, my question is how in. I know, I know. I, I know, but yeah, of course you got a car. Of course, that's the important thing. We've got to turn this to a competition. I, t- I got a, I got a dent. I got a dent, dude. I got a car that turns into a robot. Yeah, but we can't really fit inside of that chat. <laughs> Wait until he... it's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more comfortable. To which I can only reply. Um, Link will probably hang out because, like, a lot of stuff went down. He's concerned. He's going to be on this front of yeah. I just got to make sure that. Okay, so framed up in the comic, we're, we're looking at this as comic readers. Okay. So there's frames. People are lounging around. Is is are any of your is Numa? I, Otto probably wouldn't fit in too easily inside, although he would love to play the video game. Is Numa there, or would you leave them kind of out of this? Because it's you haven't really figured out a good way of getting hold of Ghost Girl yet. 
Um, how do you text her? I mean, she doesn't have stuff. So that she's she's been some research throwing into that. I'm gonna go get chalk and candles going. Right there. There, there may be some research necessary there, but um, so what we're seeing, and and we can assume we'll, we'll get to that. Wait, I want to see what Mercury stuff is. Uh, oh, wait, I opened up the wrong thing. Do do do. Your family and by extension the HL is asking a lot of questions about Link. The guy in the cool power suit, what piece of information about Link did you intercept before your family saw it? I managed to hide his connection to Aegis, as that would allow them to get a lot more information about him. Okay, so, but you know, but your family doesn't. Cool. You thought your family made a big deal out of your heroic destiny, but Adam, Concord, has caused more closed-door meetings in two weeks than the first time Transcendent went evil and took over the moon. Uh, Transcendent, you can throw him in there as a, like, Superman slash Captain Marvel analog. Um... Probably more Captain Marvel, but uh, when evil and took over, what did you say to your parents that I actually got them to back off the kid a little? I pulled the distraction maneuver by mentioning that Concord's parents must be shocked by their son's newfound fame. This caused them to pounce upon the Amaris. Afterwards, I quickly ushered him away, saying that we were going to train. I felt a little bad for his parents, but also the poor guy's eyes glazed over, and I knew I had to act quickly before his mind shut down. Lovely. And you didn't pull aggro, so go you. Pull parent aggro. Constant worry in the Gale household. Did I get this wrong, or does does Harry have a little sister? No. I thought there was a legacy question of like who didn't the leg. I thought the legacy had a question for like who do you think is going to be the next legacy after you? I chose not that one. Oh, you chose not to answer that one. That's fair. Yeah. Because I would just love to have like a little eight year old sister who's like not doesn't actually have any speed powers, but still manages to tire you out. <laughs> no. No? You don't want that? Sounds adorable. No, because then parents constantly move. Yeah, that's fair. You gotta have somebody to protect. Anyway. Um, okay, so we got all that together. So what we see in the, in the, to get back to this, what we see in the comic panels are you guys kind of lounging around. Link's probably purposely putting his feet up on the coffee table where he's not supposed to put it. Um, uh, yeah. Ha! So she's kind of in the back, you know. Harry and Harry and and uh, Adam are, you know, a lot of lot of two player. I mean, it, it goes really weird. Like they they go back and like back and forth between between playing like hyper realistic like VR first person shooters to like, uh, like circa nineteen eighty four Commando. Is it Commando? Like the old like uh, oh, I can't I I can't remember what even the name of the uh, Contra. That's what it is. Like old, like like old, uh, like old, you know, circa nineteen eighties contra, and with the same amount of enthusiasm, it doesn't seem to even delay things very much. So all of you guys are kind of sitting around, and you're in the process of doing this, talking about this big challenge slash fight that you've got coming up. Like mostly debating the tactical specifics, like who's going to be the lead on the thing, who's handling who, who's who's handling like like free safety kind of like triage stuff, um, that kind of thing in the situation. So we are led as readers to believe that they're planning some sort of assault, but in a very desultory kind of hanging off the edges of the furniture kind of way. Because as somebody pointed out to me, everybody, every human being basically plays parkour with their furniture until they're like 25. Yeah, Jason Paul believes me up on the coffee table. He doesn't say that would be the same thing. But it's okay when he does it, his coffee table. And he's been nagged about his... And honestly, the first time you started to say it, you got like two words into it and literally heard your dad saying it. Like, it sounded like him. And you just, like, threw yourself into a massive coughing fit to cover it up. <laughs> um, so, uh, what kind of... Like, what kind of things are you guys saying or suggesting or shouting out from the from the video game couch or something with regards to, um, you know this kind of thing. The experienced people in this, in, in this particular situation are from the group's perspective, Jason and Harry. Uh, well, we probably need to lock the primary target down with someone that can go toe to toe with, um, that's probably, and I can, I can play back up that Mercury scouting around and tackling the Mer- Mercury jump in on this because you have some doubts about Link's ability to actually handle the main, the main antagonist, like head to head. This particular antagonist might be, he might not be ready for this. 
I mean, Concord could also go to the True. I was thinking if uh, if if an opening showed up, he could definitely could definitely take him out. I just don't know yet how much can take. You know, I, I don't want to don't want to push far. Well, also, Harry, you can just move so fast to kind of keep them from actually being able to land any hits. If you're if you're willing to volunteer yourself, is uh... well, yeah. I mean, once Harry starts like hyping him up, yeah. oh, hyping up Concord. Yeah, it's like he's not gonna like put himself out there and be like, oh yeah, no, I can. What? It'll just be more of like, no, I'm okay with. It. Oh yeah, that's great. Well, I need and 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 I'll just if you don't mind, I'll add. I mean, I've been getting training from the Gales. Like it should be like and Harry. But yeah, yeah. And I got to bleed off some power anyway, so... Uh, Harry's kind of thinking of me, he kind of had to this thing in, and he's like tugging at the scarf when a tiny little piece of cloth got wrapped. Still kind of sparking a little bit here and there, but <laughs> um, a little bit. So if, if, if he... Go ahead. No, you, you do your thing. I was just going to say, you know, I, if, if you think that you could maybe, you know, knock him down quickly enough, I mean, then maybe Link, Link and I could back you up on that, and Mercury as... You know, as the floater to deal with anything untoward that happens or uh, if another threat joins. If you guys can keep up, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, probably. <best. laughs> I think I think I think we could probably uh, go fast and situate. But you certainly got the most flexibility the unexpected. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, I'm just writing up a quick thing. I realized I needed I needed to get the villain's monologue ready. Get the villain's monologue ready. So, like, okay. And right about then, you get, like, one of those little pings saying, uh, well, uh, it kind of comes over the, like, intercom or something like that. Like, Jason, if you're going... Actually, no. The the TV screen switches right in the middle of the game, switches to, like, a a, a video conference interface with um, Miss uh, jo- Miss jo- Johnson? Jo- Joseph's. Joseph's. With uh, Miss Miss Joseph's, like, right in there. Um, and she's just looking there, uh, Jason, if you and the team are going to do this, you're going to have to suit up and head out within the next, uh, five to 10 minutes. Good luck. Good luck to all of you. Let's, uh, let's do it. The world will be watching. So, uh, Link, I'm curious about something cause I just realized I need to ask this. Um, have you been, are you in your suit? Do you stay? I mean, cause you, for you, your identity is kind of a. A deal. I mean, it's you're not a J, you're not the Jan, so it's not like your 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 whole main thing, and you're not entirely sure these guys would even recognize you. But someone like the Gale might, like the kid, the Gale kid might. Are you are you showing up like and just hanging out in the suit, a la whatever Iron Man Mark Forty Seven or something like that, where he's hanging out on the couch in the armor? Uh, if I feel like I have reservations about these people, well, I, I have been, we've just talked about like so fast, uh, but yeah, if we're not sure that. Well, I mean. <sighs> I think you kind of have to answer that a little bit. I mean, uh, stuff that you Numa's thought is that um, Numa's assessment is that Quill is a private person. So if he's he's not going to randomly start shouting out people's questions based on the interview stuff that she's seen, uh, research that she's done, the few times he's been in the public eye, he tends to be a fairly private person. So he's probably okay. Uh, Mercury, well, backing up. Concord's young enough that he's not probably going to even recognize who you are. He's not, like, in the life. Um, and he's enough into the whole superhero thing that if you can trust him with your ID, he's he's likely to, even if he actually knows what that means, he's probably going to think it's so cool that he's been entrusted with it, he's likely to keep it to himself, except under, like, maybe torture or something. Um, Mer- if, if we're also coming up on a battle, like, real soon, uh-huh. then for that reason. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, in that case, you would have shown up expecting, expecting. you know, people show up as like, really, you're just going to hang out in the army? It's like, I'm expecting trouble, which is fine, too. Um, which makes it even funnier with your with your feet up on the coffee table. <laughs> it's yeah. really kind of amusing to me. I shouldn't find it as funny as I do, but I totally do. All right, so cut to the next action sequence. You guys are gathered up. You've, you've, you've uh, come up on the target. You're currently, you know, waiting for the signal to strike. Um, in the dark, uh, you know, and, uh, your, uh, contact, um, finally gives you the high sign, hands up three, two, one, and points. And you, 
uh, and, and the the uh, you you step out of the shadows and into the light, prepared for your second battle and possibly the most terrifying ones of your lives. And then we cut to this. Uh, so what we're looking at is a smiling, hopelessly uh, make, made up to within an inch of her life uh, television sh- like morning show host with like coiffed hair and everything, frozen smile. And in the background, instead of a wall or a backdrop, one of those windows that looks out right at street level. <laughs> like the Today Show. Like the Today Show kind of a thing. Um, with people like lined up and they've got signs up and stuff. Um, you know, Tempe, Arizona. Um, love you, Concord. Love, love you, know, that, that kind of stuff. And it, what's that? Oh, <laughs> Here, and, Dad set this up. and she fixes it. Oh, God, yes. And she uh, fixes the camera with the smile. And heroes in Halcyon City are, some would say, common. But the city loves welcoming new, fresh faces. And we have four of the newest and freshest faces out there. These four heroes that we have in the studio today. I am Tasha Starr. And I have with us Jason Quill, the mysterious Link... Mercury, which is to say the latest and uh, the latest and w- w- some would say greatest member of the world's fastest family and Concord, you are so adorable. I cannot wait to talk to you. So here we have, I guess the, the, we, we don't necessarily know, uh, you know, these we saw them in action uh, a few weeks ago on this same channel's uh, uh, afternoon re- news report. And now we have them here in the studio for live interview to get your questions answered people and she kind of turns around to the window and everyone like she they they get that camera out it cuts to the camera where the cameraman's like outside with the steady cam like taking it along the side of the of the people that are at the cordon so it can kind of rush past everybody um well they're all like waving in and doing all the stuff and waving their signs and everything I, jason has the most <laughs> fake smile that anybody on the team has seen. Yeah, but it's one that clearly he's practiced a lot. He's kind of waving to the uh, waving to the studio audience. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Um, <sighs> Doe in the headlights. Look, yeah. And Mike's and, and suddenly Concord's thinking, I can't take it. I can't take these kind of hits. I'm not meant to be the person who's facing off against the main enemy. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Well, sorry we couldn't get your fifth hero in. We haven't been able to reach Ghost Girl yet. And everyone kind of goes, ooh, you know. Uh, so we just had the four of you. What's that? I said, that's probably when Con Ghost Girl. Actually, what she, what, she says is, what she says is the Ghost Girl. The mysterious Ghost Girl. Everyone's like, ooh. But, you know, in the meantime, we can talk to the four of you. So, who's the best friend so far? Oh my God! Is it going to be that? Well, God, Jason finally speaks up. <laughs> the when the silence has gotten to her. We, we've been just you know kind of hanging out some. I mean, we're all there. What? Uh, yeah. What? What? It, what? Oh, training, training. Oh, so you're getting ready for some action. Uh, um, you know that that brings up a great. Um, you know, you've been training now with this team. Uh, Jason, Jason Quill. Uh, how is? This team, this new team, different than working with your father and your stepbrother. The smile visibly. <laughs> well, it was my father and stepbrother that I had been with and grown up with a year. Uh, so there's a lot of difference there. But uh, yeah, these are a great, great bunch of guys. Lots of, uh, lots of, of action stuff. Right. And you, I mean, obviously... Uh, I'm sorry. What was I got to cut out of this for a second? What was the name of your show? The the, the animated show? The, the Adventures of Johnny of uh, Jason Quill, of course. Well, and you, you're used to action adventure, so I mean, you know, a bit of an expert there. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's maybe not quite as uh, quite as much fun as it looked, looked like on the cartoon. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, no, absolutely. And, well. I mean, what, what could be as much fun as that cartoon? I mean, I know we all grew up watching, uh, you know, Jason growing up. And now, I, are, are you 18 now these days, Jason? Ladies, take note. Uh, 
uh, still, uh, still 17. And, and just, I, you honestly can't tell if it's the audience or if they actually have a track of women going, ah, which is creepy on so many levels. A lot of, they'll probably draw a, a block. There's some, there's some like older women out in the audience, out in the outside audience who are like, doing the big thumbs down thing and shaking and some other girls who are dancing around because they're still apparently under 18. Um, yeah, you are absolutely in a recent, you know, I know and she's sort of checking her notes and flipping through and you get the distinct impression maybe that she's hadn't really familiar side, familiarized herself with some of these notes as much as she might have early in a re in, in a recent interview, you mentioned your time working with the Six for Science team in Zurich. Uh, why did you leave that team for this one? Well, I was never really part of that. We kind of ran into each other. Uh, actually, wasn't with them in Zurich when that stuff happened. Um, we ran into each other oh. in, in Vienna, actually. Uh, and uh, they're, a, they're a very close... I, I don't... I, I, <laughs> I have to know more about that at some later date. I have to know what what's going on there. Um, uh, you know, I wish them certainly wish them the best of. Them. Oh, oh, oh uh, okay. Turns to uh, she turns kind of slightly. The camera sees her pivot. Link, Link. Any any chance we can get a look at the man inside the armor? Not at this time. No. How does his voice sound inside? Is it is it is it mechanical at all, or is it is it? As clean, like relatively clear, or I don't want it. It's totally <laughs> modulated. So it, you could, you probably could not make him out. It, it's not like he tried real hard to do a lot of disguise. It's just his his system. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have made a Budapest. Yeah, you and I remember Budapest very differently. Um, did you do? De- okay, I understand. Did you design the armor yourself? You're still. Uh, uh, you know, it, uh, you sound about the same age as uh, some of the other uh, heroes here. Uh, did you pick all this up on your own? Are you a second generation genius? Uh, uh, you could say I inherited it, yes, but the structure of the armor is interesting. Now, uh, again, a bit of an aside from the GM: Are Numa and Otto like? How did you? How did you guys show up? Out, like outside or, or, or coming in or anything like that. Is, is Otto waiting in a back alley or on the rooftop? Or He's probably waiting there. Numa is probably off stage, just watching, taking notes. Um, you could think of her almost like her, his business manager. Okay. I, I shouldn't say this, but honestly, what she reminds me of as much as anything is is sort of mercy, like Lex, Luthor, yes. Lex Luthor's mercy from like Young Justice or really the, the Justice League stuff, but they... The the legal assistant who also has a gun arm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I know it's not exactly right, but it, it strikes me somewhat like certainly fulfilling. It was mercy from Overwatching to come rescue me. Yeah. In this point. Um, well, OK. Uh, and of course, we have Mercury, the the the, the newest active member of, of Team Gale. Uh, and she, she kind of leans in and she kind of kind of rests her her one of her elbows on on the arm of the chair and and her her hands kind of come together so she can so she can rest her chin thoughtfully on her on her hands on her like sort of on her knuckles harry as the member of the team with all due respect to mr quill the the longest lineage of family heroics what is it like knowing that you're going to have to shoulder the weight for this team rather than being surrounded by veteran world-saving heroes who, who tend to take on that weight for you? Um, it's great. This is what I've been for. I'm glad to be put my skills to use to help people just like my parents. Headlines tomorrow morning in the newspapers. Harry Gale claims he will carry all the weight for this team. <laughs> which... Which your mother, which your mother and father, right? Like seriously, somewhere in somewhere in the city, Chase right now is rubbing his temples. Um, just like, oh, kid, oh, kid. Um, well, it's great that you're ready to step up. Are you the fastest in your family, Harry? Uh, I'm. <laughs> I love, I love the painful silences. It's so good. No, my father still the fastest. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You remind me what his name is. Oh. Uh... Silver, silver something, silver streak, silver streak. Ah, the venerable silver streak. I shouldn't say venerable. The the 
famous Silver Streak. Uh, still the fastest. Uh, uh, you heard it here first and kind of laughed. I mean, very, very much a fake laugh, an artificial laugh. Uh, well, that's great. And you've been spending, uh, we know, a, a lot of time with Concord. You are just the cute. I want to pinch your cheeks. You are, um, she kind of looks at a couple of her notes and kind of shuffles through a couple of, like, cards. Um, you're, you're, a, you're, you're, are you another speedster? You oh I I assume I mean, because you're being mentored by the Gales is that is that correct the to a certain extent uh, by Harry and uh, you say kind of what what are your powers? Um, and he's just like you know just sort of like fidgeting there for a second and he's like what's what's his scarf what's his scarf doing? Oh, it's probably like he's probably like got one hand on it and it's probably like sparking near his hand and it's just like, um, well, uh, I, I can make stuff. So you can you can fabricate, you can just out of your own head just make things up. Yeah, that's that's really very. That's very are you? I, this is a fairly, as I understand it, with the uh, the the superheroes. That, are you are you a flyer? Are you a flyer, Concord? Because I understand that's that's relatively rare power for. For, for many heroes. <laughs> well, it, I mean, in all honesty, I'm looking at you guys. It, it actually kind of is. Um, and he'll, he'll pretty like, you know, as soon as he, she says something, yeah, I can fly. Interesting. Uh, force fields? Yeah. Uh, make up anything? Force fields flying? Super strength. A little bit. You know, you know Debbie, it might be better. If- yes, Jason. Wait for the uh, the bad guys to come. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Of, of course, I and we wouldn't want. I mean, so really, Concord, really very. She kind of turns back. Really, very powerful. You just, uh, you're just a, a, a wild Swiss Army knife, a, a bag of. Tri- uh, with some of that, what are your weaknesses? If you got that that kind of power. <laughs> <coughs> really, I think say that out loud, just like under his <laughs> Jason, Jason coughs oh, like into his. Oh right! Ah, of course, I can't, can't, can't discuss the weaknesses. That would, that would, that would be. Uh, the bad guys might be listening. With our ratings, they probably are. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, we couldn't get her into the studio here, but Ghost Girl, you guys had a, you, you all had a chance to work with her. If you, if you had a chance to talk with her. Um, uh, we understand what we've been able to learn is that she's a spirit from the past, from the uh, Revolutionary War. Uh, 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 yes, Jason, you look like you had something there. Uh, no, no. All right, from you know, from back in that uh, far back in the past, and now she's here in the modern world. And uh, what's her least favorite thing about this crazy science fiction reality that she's found herself in? Yeah, has she talked about that? Has she run into any of her great great grandchildren? Uh, we're doing what we can to help her integrate. <laughs> right, right, right. Integrate. I mean, integration. Trying to work within the world and understand all that thing. Uh, a lot of people looking up to you, especially as young heroes. You've got a younger generation. Uh, certainly, a lot of people are going to be more interested in the exploits of Mercury than they are going to be in the Silver Streak, uh, just because closer to the same age, uh, except for. Concord here, Concord. I don't you think that all the violence that inevitably surrounds superheroes is hard for someone your age to process? Would you say that you're a good role model for other kids your age? Well, you know. She's just kind of like, and she stops. And it's like her face just shuts off and waits. It's like it's got a you know. Debbie. Um... Yes, Jason. I'm sorry. We'll get right back to you, Concord. Well, I was just gonna say on on Concord's behalf, you know, it, 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 sometimes there's some valuable lessons you can learn getting uh, getting into adventurous young. So uh, I'm sure Concord's gonna do a great job, um, and we'll certainly all be watching out for him as much as he watches out for us, because that's what it's about, right? Indeed, and well and well said, well said. Um, actually, Dave, you know what? This is the second time you've leaped to his defense, and I think I, I feel like I feel like this is a good time for the. It, it, this is a obviously it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but this is a threat. When you when so I think that this is actually triggering a defend move on behalf of uh, uh, especially deer in the headlights Concord here, who's just sort of frozen at the, some of these questions. So I'm looking at the at the move defend. When you defend someone or something from an immediate threat, does that work for you? Uh, sure. All right. Roll savior. 
<laughs> he wants to roll Savior? I've got him. Jason Quill rolls with Savior. 10, a full hit. Uh, this is a little bit weird here. Um, does, that, does, does, that, does my line draw applause for the audience? Um, a, lot of, a lot of approving nods and I think for... This, these aren't PC threats. These are NPC threats. On a hit, you keep them safe and choose one on... Uh, 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 yeah. Is this right? How she is in thing. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're NPC threats. On a hit, you keep them safe and choose one. Uh, and then on seven and nine, we don't need to worry about it. It doesn't cost you. So you can choose to add a point of team to the pool. You can take influence over the person that you protect, or you can clear a condition, which you don't currently have. Um, and I don't know if you already, you would, you would know faster than I would whether or not you already have influence over Concord. Um, I, I do not. Um... So... You can go with sort of building up the team, building up the team a little bit by putting a point into team, or you can uh, you can take influence over uh, over here, over uh, sorry over over Concord. What do you think? I'd like to take it. Concord. Does it seem like he was leaping into your defense? Does that seem? Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that was totally what was going on. <laughs> the only reason he probably didn't have a uh, horse probably just they didn't interact very often. And now it's like, right. oh good, I don't know what's going on. What's happening? And it's like Jason's like deflecting everything they're saying. It's like, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Well, no, well said. And she kind of leads a little golf clap kind of thing with the audience and gets some, you know, the people they get. What's that? Bobbing up probably claps a little bit too. Oh, Concord, that's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, well, with three boys right here, we're going to take a quick break, and then we come back, we're going to talk girlfriends. And right then... Jack, Jack, Jack. I'm getting word in from my subcutaneous transmitters in an emergency somewhere we have to... There is... So... As she's saying this, and she's starting to say this, and we're going to talk about there's there's a feedback buildup, um, uh, kind of happening in the inner mic or something like that, and it actually looks as though uh, huh, who would be I think Harry would probably be the person to notice this since he moves so fast. You're actually seeing the sound buildup so extreme that you're at the window back behind it, um, back behind you guys. Uh, is actually starting to vibrate and shake, and it's 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 quickly kicking up to the speed that you've learned the hard way, after much scolding from your parents, will break it, even safety glass. Um, and just before it's about to hit that vibrational pitch, you hear through the feedback, it kind of reforms into a different voice and says, "Actually, this interview is over." What do you do, Harry? Thank Christ. <laughs> and he absolutely says that. Hey, luck, it's dark sun. Uh, <laughs> and he actually says that into a live mic. It's perfect. Thank Christ. <laughs> I, I couldn't have. I couldn't have hoped for a better response to that um, thing. So Mercury, the, the 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 vibration is building up in the glass. You hear this female voice say, "Actually, this interview is over." Just before the glass is about to shatter, what do you do? Um, I yell at everyone, "Get down!" Okay, is there in? Go ahead. You said you yelled at everybody to get down, and then you what? You're out of the way. Are you okay? So you specifically like get her down with your with your super speed. Yeah. Kind of give her out of the way. Okay. So what I would like you to do, um, given that you're protecting this this helpless NPC, is I'd like you to roll defend as the glass shatters and sprays into the into the room from outside. And people are screaming and scattering outside, and also the guy of Mercury rolls Savior a hit. And we're going to look at that real quick. Basic moves. We're just back on defend. Okay, so that's a nine. So, you defend yourself for something from me, a threat, roll Savior for NPC threats on hit. You keep them safe and choose one. You can add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. On the seven to nine, it costs you. You either expose yourself to danger or you escalate the situation. Um, expose myself to danger, and I'll take a team. Okay, so that's excellent. Thank you. And then just a second here, we're going to do the. Okay, I'm going to deal a point of team to the pool. 
So we are up to two, and you successfully take care, and you, how is that worded specifically? Expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. I'll make sure I... You don't want to take influence with uh, Tasha Star. I'm stunned. I mean, Jason has got her covered. <laughs> Jason's going to take influence over Tasha? I don't know about that. Uh, Besides, if we're I'm lucky, defending against her, not defending her. <laughs> if we're lucky, this will mean that you won't have to talk about girlfriend. They'll have something else to talk about for a week. Yeah, make sure those words are good. Uh, oops. Um, these mics are- <laughs> oh, these mics are totally live. The camera is rolling. This is, this is going to... Yeah. This is going to be the most highly rated morning show program that's aired in like, well, three months probably. Um, okay, so yeah, I think I'll do. I'm going to do a. We have something happen here. So the glass shatters and the glass comes flying in. Uh, Link, you're in no real danger. Jason, you're in no real danger. Concord, I'm going to assume is not in any real danger here. Uh, Harry. Str- Go ahead. Can I, can I try to protect the people inside? Well, the glass is coming in. You could certainly try to protect the people that are uh, inside. The glass is flying into the studio from outside. So, you like the camera crew, there's a smaller in-studio audience, but there's a lot of production crew, you know, back behind the cameras and stuff like that. Uh, Harry's, so you could do, you know, that's... Like what? What do? You, what are you thinking? Like a, a shield of some kind? A, a yeah, like a big barrier between the body and the cast member, the glass. Okay, that's going to leave you on the wrong side of it. Uh, you may not be able to protect yourself as well, but you can certainly roll defend and see how that turns out. That's another savior roll. A lot of I, I have a move. Oh, you have a move for that. What is that move? It's called metal. Oh, I have yeah. to generate. Burn. Okay, let's see what we got for that. So if I'm gonna, I'm going to pull that up here real quick and. All at once, you're just gonna flare up, and how? Where, oh, did we did we write down how the generation of the? Yep. Uh, it's under boost. Is when you charge up your powers, roll plus condition. All right, so you can just roll the. It's kind of it's the same roll as for take a powerful blow. You can just do that over. Yeah, I'm just gonna do the flat two d six because I don't condition. Right. I just I want to point out for people that there is a roll your conditions button on the character sheet just so you know that you have it. Because occasionally you'll need that for take a powerful blow, or, or in this case, um, he needs it for his. Oh wait, no, I can roll condition. Yep. Oh. Yep, it's right there. Concord right. rolls conditions, which is six, which is great when you want to take a powerful blow. It's less awesome when you want to boost. What it, or or generate burn? How does that look? Oh, no, actually, that's my second best option. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. I did not know. So what happens? I don't see... Where did you write that down? Did you write it in your... Um... Uh, so when you charge up your powers, plus conditions, turn we have... All right. Uh, on, on a hit, roll three burn. On seven to nine, mark your condition. On a miss, roll two burn, and mark three conditions. Oh, that's a good result? I suppose it is, because now you can, like, generate even more yeah. burn next time. I don't know. So I think we're going to... Angry, afraid, and insecure. Interview has me so insecure at the moment. Okay, so you've got your two burn, and you want to throw up moat. Spend one burn to create a barrier that will hold back threats as long as you keep your attention on it. I may call on you to spend another burn if the barrier is threatened by a particularly powerful enemies. Um, since you're doing... Yeah, you're probably just throwing it up between them and the innocent people. I think you guys are going to be on the outside, or the... Uh, uh, on the on the wrong side of it, but all the innocents are going to be on the other side. Um, so we don't really. I mean, this in this in this particular case, we really don't need to roll the defend. It's just kind of. And I think you've taken enough condition hits, certainly. Yeah, just, just a few. All right. So you, and you still have a burn left to burn, if you are a burn to left to burn something. At which point in time you'll, I guess, have to drop the moat. So this is just as long as you can concentrate on it, but it's strong, so that's good. All right. So defending there. Uh, and, uh, through the, through the open hole of the window and the people scattering in the streets, you see, I'm going to have to grab a picture. One second. Do got this one. I thought I had a better picture than that, but I guess not. Sorry. I'm going to grab this real quick. 
What's that? You rolled a six, so I would say yes. Absolutely. Oh, that's weird. Uh, that's really weird. This picture doesn't want to obey what I'm doing here. Close that and see if I can drag that over. Yeah, that works better. All right, you see picture uploading. Please wait. This individual's kind of step out of the crowd and throw off like a... Uh, how in the hell do you stand out in a crowd like that with a cloak? I guess there's a couple of cosplayers. Steps out into... What's that? A really big sign. There's a lot of big signs. Um, actually, yeah, not so much a hood as like she had one of those big board signs, but it was uh, like, you know, down with supers, villains and heroes both kind of thing. She said, we are here to prevent... The, to stop the endless cycle of new so-called heroes stepping into the same tired ruts that have been placed to control the rest of us by, their gener- by the generations before them. We are here to stop this, this endless cycle of abuse and misappropriation of power and the death of innocence. Renegade interrupt. <laughs> renegade interrupt. I don't even know what the reference is, but I love it. Mass Effect. Oh, Renegade interrupt. <laughs> oh my god, that's so perfect. I kind of love it. And what do, uh well, what the hell? Bill shouted Renegade interrupt. So, uh Link, what do you do? If I hear this soliloquy happening, <laughs> I, I if I hear this soliloquy, I just love the pause there. Really? The actual move I have. Okay, what is it? No, it's not. Oh, okay. I just, I just, I just love the pregnant pause. Is like you think of all the other words you could say instead of soliloquy. If I hear this bull soliloquy, you know. Anyway, uh, so what do you do? I'm gonna engage grappling lines and get out there and body check this person. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Um, so it sounds to me, I love that. So, you, do you like? Do the grapple lines go into the ground? Like, like on either side, kind of go past her on either side, and like while she's still declaiming, and then and suddenly you're just in. I have this, I have this thing, this picture in my head of her like being in the in the camera, like in the in the comic frame, and then suddenly your body slamming in and knocking her out of frame, kind of. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of what you're aiming for. While she, exactly right. Yeah. What well, did you see? The, you saw the Justice League cartoon, right? Which one? Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. 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 Well, Cersei is trying to threaten people and she gets a piano thrown. Oh god, I love that. That is one that is bar none one of my favorites. Like it's like one thing happens, another one. It's like, okay, knock it off. And then there's a like, oh god. And here's the piano. Um no, I love it. I love it. I love it. I need to open up another thing. So all right. I think that then is going to be uh directly engaged. Certainly seems like directly engaged to me, which is and I don't even know who this person is, what they can do or nothing. I'm not waiting for anything. Uh, whenever you charge into a fight with that shit, hedging your bets, you can shift your danger up in the other label. All right. What do you, what do you, sh- so you had your danger is already a two, isn't it? Correct. Oh God. All right. So you're shifting danger up to a three and what are you shifting down? I'm shifting superior down. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Once you've finished shifting, go ahead and give that run. You directly engage a threat roll danger on a hit. You trade blows on a 10 plus pick two on a seven to nine pick one. We have, oh, please. I was like, look at this going, a... oh, what the hell? Ow. Dude, did you roll a, oh, wow. Boxcars plus three gives you a 15 on, holy buckets of crap. That is a, <laughs> hello, nurse. All right. On a hit trade blows, on a 10 plus pick two, you can choose from resist or completely avoid their blows. Take something from them. Create an opportunity for your allies. Impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. So impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. And you, you get to pick two, though. So what else do you? I mean, it doesn't. Honestly, I'm going to say that. Um, do they seem to be holding some kind of device that was responsible for this, or is that not obvious immediately? No, she she appears to be. I mean, the picture's kind of pretty stable. I mean, she's got some sort of. Slightly ex- She's created an opportunity for your allies. Uh, she's briefly stunned, so who else can make a move? We'll- All right. That's how, yeah, before anybody else. Well, actually, kind of before everybody else. So, so yeah, in the in the comic frame, like, she's declaiming, and this whole top of the panel is filled with text, and she's, you know, gesturing. And we actually see the, the curling kind of snaking S-coil uh, uh, 
cables like sh- kind of going past her in the frame. And then we see as she continues to claim in the next frame, the, the, the cables pulling taut with those nice lines around them that show that they're quivering. And then like suddenly Link is in frame where she was standing and the thought and the speech balloon arrow is like kind of warbling and trailing off off panel where she's being like been knocked basically flat off the page. Um, is that is that good? Are you are you happy with that link? Is that a, is that a good narration? I got to see what picture you just put up here. <laughs> picture still connecting. <laughs> I can't believe he caught me monologuing. Okay, she is definitely going to take a con. Oh, what does she got for her? I got to look over here and see what she's got for her uh, potential conditions. Da, 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 da. Well. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm feeling she's a little bit afraid. Um, I certainly would be if that had just happened to me. So she goes skipping, like basically skidding on her back. Um, okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, so normally this would be kind of a hard move thing that I would do, but because uh, Link created an opportunity for people, uh, the way, and I'm, I'm just kind of stepping out, i got to explain the rules on this thing. The way the game generally works is when a villain gets a condition, the villain immediately acts before anybody else does in a reactive way. They do a thing. Um, she's going to do that, but he created the opportunity, so it's not actually going to take effect until uh, somebody gets to do something, whatever that something happens to be. So, right now we've got... If whatever she's doing can target Link, uh, I for I did not I I forego the uh, avoid the return blow. Yeah, you you did do that, and that reminds me that it gets, since you're trading blows and you forego you for forwent something you you didn't choose the to choose you forgot it you forgetted the uh, uh, thing you're taking a condition. What do you? Well, why do I even ask this? Uh, what condition is is Link taking as he trades blows here? I'll take angry for a hundred dollars. I, I kind of figured you probably would because you're a bull, and why wouldn't you take angry? Um, all right, so you smash into her. She goes skidding backwards. She like one hand goes clamping down. She pushes her own stuff up, and she lets out like it's not exact. It's not like a canary thing. It's not she lets out a scream, but the 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 as she's sitting up, the the rasping sound of her hand on the pavement and the gravel. Um, it all just starts to build into this massive feedback thing. And the people that are still around kind of on either side and everything are like covering their ears and starting to run. And some of them are, are like clenching up like they're like they're whatever, um, like they're starting to like almost cramp. And um, this some of them are toppling over as though it's like messed up their inner ears and they're starting to like feel that. Um, Harry has pushed the Concord. What do you do? Wait, wait, huh? Jason or Concord? Con- I'm sorry, Concord's holding the, the shield. I think it's Jason, what do you do? Jason, what do you do? As this, as this buildup happens, you have a moment here because she was knocked so flat and can't act, and, and he's created this opening for you. Um, uh, I, I, will, I will bound her to armoring up and directly engage her as well. Give, give her a good punch while she's down. Yeah, before, before, she, can get this, before she can get this thing going. Yeah, that, would, that sounds like a good idea. Too. Well, yeah, you, you have the opportunity to sort of interrupt this because of the fact that uh, Link created the opportunity for it. Otherwise, the people would, would be fully affected by it before you could really do something since it's sort of her reaction. But she is just on thing, like without any more, without any real concern whatsoever as to the potential fallout, she's just blasting as wide band as she can, um, regardless of the effect it has on those around and you can directly engage, and again, that's roll damage. Unless you have a particular move that turns that on its ear, that is, again, checking danger to directly engage a threat. Okay, let's look over here. Do, do, do. Eh. That's not bad. Not bad there. All right, so it's a palpable hit. Directly engage a threat. So on a hit, you trade blows. On the 7 to 9, pick one. Resist or avoid their blows. Take something from them. Create an opportunity for your allies or impress surprise. Now, Link, you had chosen impress surprise or frighten the opposition, correct? All right. All right. Duly noted. Uh, That's why you have to specify which one. Yeah, you need to pick one of those options on your 7 to 9. On a 10, you get to pick two of those options. 
On a seven to nine, you get to pick one of those options. Resist or avoid their blows basically means they're going to take a condition you won't. Um, normally, in this kind of situation, this is as as you've no doubt noticed in any apocalypse games. I don't roll stuff, so the effectiveness of the enemy depends largely on how your rolls go because that's not only how your attacks go, but also how your defenses go. So, uh, if I'm picking one of these three specific ones, I would... well, you you picked two out of the four. Because you had I'm saying but, like one of, those, one of those options then has like three. I you was know, no. Oh, oh, I see. Impress versus surprise or fright. I see, I see. Although honestly, it was, it was just kind of left vague. Oh, I, yeah, no, and that's you're right. That's that's absolutely like what what specific thing are you going for? Personally, I mean, I know you're going for impress, but personally, I go for surprise because you know renegade interrupt. But. If you want to go for impress, that is absolutely your prerogative. You you were the one that rolled the bloody fifteen. Um, so. So does she have? Uh huh. Looks like she's got some mechanism or something related to you know, like it looks like she's got headphones. Yeah, like kind of a suppressor, sound suppressors, or something like that. And kind of an exoskeleton built on her on her arms. It's a. Um, it's definitely some sort of weaponized thing, certainly. Can I nab away headphones, noise suppressors, protective? So what? Do you, with, with my with my take something from them. Yes, absolutely. What are you specifically looking? Not and you don't have to be super specific. Are you looking to take away her ability to generate this kind of stuff or to be immune to it? I, I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking to have her be able to whatever sort of sonic attacks. She has. Uh, okay. All right. That is absolutely fine. So. Describe what that looks like with your, you know, your nanites, your powers, that kind of thing. Like, what? How are you popping these things loose? So, as I said, he uh, he was armoring up his. Um, he's doing the, uh, you know, clap them on either, you know, either side of the head's physical attack, um, as opposed to like just a regular punch. Right. And as long as his hands are there, he's going to try to grab those. All right. So you're actually like you you clap them on there and and stun her. Or, or, or do that to stun her. And then your nanites almost kind of like, it's really hard to not imagine Venom in this case, but um, kind of like almost like crawl in or seep in or or do that weird magnetic putty thing like right around the insides of the of the ear. So when you pull your hands back, it just kind of drags them away with it. She's got, still got the chassis on, but that it kind of pops that loose um, um, from the rest of it, which is entirely possible um just give me one second here so that absolutely happens and unfortunately driving yourself in like that uh uh you know you're, you're driving yourself in directly to the source of this sort of equilibrium busting nauseating kind of sound cannon almost effect um getting in that close so um it still affects you uh what condition do you think that has on on jason because you pick up in, in trading blows, you're 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 actually uh, being affected by this to 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 a, to a degree. So, what condition do you pick up? Um, Indeed, up. I'm gonna pick afraid. Okay, why? Why does it scare you? Does it have an effect on your nanites or or? Um, it's just it, it, it's a weird sudden effect of I'm actually making this. You know, I'm actually vulnerable to here, and knows what might happen. And the, and certainly, I think part part of that is that you're with all the vibrations and, and stuff like that. You're actually seeing like the nanites from vibrating in the way that uh, the glass was, kind of. So you're like, right. what what's the what's the potential fallout here? It's like a feedback from. Yeah. So what's the potential fallout here? What am I? You know, do I need to be? How bad is this going to get before? Um, before all that kind of stuff. I can't figure out how to get this thing out of here. Um, Okay. Oh, dang it. Sorry, I'm trying to grab the thing here. Um, that's really super annoying. All right, so you get in there and clap her on the ears, yank this away. The sound kind of washes over you. She also takes a condition, however, so where is that at? Seriously, where is that? Um, all right. Good God, I have so many screens open. It's not even funny. Um, she was, before, she was af- afraid, and now she's angry. So she's got that going on, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh, actually, that would be super helpful right now because I don't have to flip through so many screens. I had printed out something that I needed. Now I have it. Yay! Um, okay, so I'm 
I'm, I'm pondering. Okay. So you pull the headphones back and the uh, nanites are kind of uh, warbling a little bit. Um, wobbling. And you, all, you see an effect on her almost immediately. Her face kind of sags um, with, with just the blow of it. But she doesn't dial back. You see her eyes just like for a second, like start to kind of like get lost in the effect of this thing. And then you see them just harden and, and this, it's weird because you don't even know who this person is, but the sheer anger, the hatred or something like just, it's like years of resentment and you don't even know this person focuses on you or focuses her and the sound intensifies despite the effect that it's having on her. Um, you actually see some blood trickling down uh, her ears. Um, it's it's people are trying to get away. Um, some of them are falling over and, and kind of curling the balls. Some of them may be fleeing, but this is actually resonating in the pavement. It's starting to shake at the bottom buildings. There is a serious op- chance here that that if this continues. Um, you there's a, there's a sincere chance of of, uh, of some kind of structural damage happening uh, with with the buildings or something like that, and she seems willing to literally like severely harm herself just to take you guys out. Dedicated. <laughs> Harry, what do you do? The woman is down to the side. Um, Concord has. The group shielded all the and, and the, additionally from the sound. So we're like while everybody else is scrambling in the street, um, and, and Concord, you're still feeling these these sound waves in a kind of nauseating way. But you're holding you're holding together on the shield. Everybody back in the studio audience, in fact, the cameraman, and everything like that, are fine. Um, Harry, what do you do? Uh, probably like shout, get out. Like, are the studio audience just there? They're, they're, I mean, some of them are pulling, some of them are pulling back. Some of them are, are getting out because, you know, this is, this is LCN city. They, they know enough when there's a supers battle, you don't generally want to be on the sidelines. Um, some of them are sticking around the camera people. Unlike regular Halcyon people are like, I keep my job. If I get it on film, if I don't keep, if I don't get it on film, I might live, but I won't keep my job. Um, so they're still rolling. Uh, your interviewer is not a news person as much as a, uh, you know, morning interview person. So she's not, she, she's crawling away on her hands and feet or on her hands and knees. Um, hands and feet would be interesting. So they're not really in any danger because of what Concord's doing. Uh, the crowd outside is all that kind of stuff. While she's doing the sound wave, she's also kind of screaming something. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, superheroes. Yeah. I'm, you know, you will pay, I will take you all down, et cetera, et cetera, so forth. Kind of get out and then... Is that... All right. Uh, to, to knock her cold, to... Like, uh, what, what specifically are you, are you doing to her? Speed punch? Because that is from my quickest way to left on the sidelines out of relative danger. Okay. Um, in that case, I would definitely go with um, uh, uh, directly engage a threat because you're going to be like, basically pl- – what's that? S- say that one more time. You broke up a little bit for me. Oh, are you defending people? Okay. So you're, you're – yeah, so, people. So really not about – it's not about her. It's about shutting down this, this sonic blast. I have a specific suggestion if you're looking. Yeah, I, you know uh, – Go for it. So you've probably seen your parents do a trick like this in the past. Uh, air conducts sound. If there's not air to conduct the sound, then she can't hurt anybody. If you can run fast enough uh, the flow of air around here, you can basically... Or you can do the, you know, twirling your arms, disrupt the air. But e- e- either of those, yeah. Yeah. Right and you do... One of the powers that you specifically kept was that was that uh, sort of your mom's thing with the air control. Yeah. The best part is I can totally see, like, uh, Mercury going to run in there and both of the science guys being like, Oh, no. Air conduct sound. Use your arm thing. <laughs> and he's already doing it. You know, like, guys, I have I have seriously been dr- – I, I have seriously had this drilled into me since I was, like, eight. Um, does that sound Does that sound good, Harry? Like the sort of the, the vacuum 
run around them until the air is pulled out of the spe- out of the space kind of a thing. All right. In that case, uh, let's see. I think it's uh, Savior then. All right. Roll Savior. Do, do, do. That's seven. So let's take a look at that basic move, which is defend. When you defend someone or something from an immediate threat, roll Savior. On a hit, you keep them safe and choose one. But on a seven to nine, it costs you. Expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. Um you can choose to add team to the pool. We have, oh, you know, I'm a terrible, terrible person. I've screwed up. I've screwed up the rules already. Um, I'll, I'll keep that. Should have been, been adding. Well, no, there's a, there's a, there's a, yeah, for entering combat. And I forgot. I'm a, I'm a terrible person. We will do that in just a second. Um, and theory, okay, so for NPC threats on a hit, you keep them safe and choose one. On a seven to nine, it costs you. Expose yourself to days or escalate the situation. You can choose one of the three. Add team to the pool. Take influence over someone you protect or clear a condition. And, and you protect the people. It's just a question of whether or not you expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. Ex- exposing yourself to danger is basically, you're, you, in this case, um, oh boy, it's tough because you're, you're well, we'll, yeah. we're gonna, we'll do a different move there. It'll be fun. I, I have, I know what, I know what's going on in both of your options. So you can kind of see whichever makes sense. If you're taking the hit yourself or if you're, if things get worse either way, I'm, I'm trying to decide the other bit. Oh, the either add team or take influence. Um, in this case, uh, just so you know, uh, adding team does what adding team does. And I'm going to, we're going to do the other little team maneuver here in just a second. Um, influence since the team since the group or so since the people that you're protecting is sort of like a homogenized sort of npc group um you can uh we can we could sort of decide who in the audience that we maybe didn't really notice um you can take influence over the whole group which is great you've got a crowd of people who think you're a hero um who are gonna be like rooting for you and and you'll have influence over those folks or you can specifically say Unbeknownst to anybody, so and so was in the crowd, and they're an important re- person for this reason, and blah blah blah. And, and I have influence over them, so that's that's the option that you've got there. Um, we could talk. What's that? I said we talk. Yeah, but you so so you could go somewhere. You can go something like that, or um, or you can go with the feed, feeding into the team since you're taking this big hit. Which one do you think? Either one. I mean, there's there's. Good stuff happening for either one of those things. Why? <laughs> Do I even want to know what YouTube thing you linked? Oh, God. Everyone's a hero in their own way. You and you. And you and mostly me. And you. And you. And you. Uh, man, I need to watch that again. I haven't seen that in a long time. Okay. What do you think, Harry? You think you're going to add to the team pool? Okay. Sure. All right. In that case, I'm going to, we'll deal one into the team pool. So you've got one coming there, but first we're going to, so now that this is because, um, and are you, you're, you're taking a, a power, you're, you're, you're putting yourself in danger. Okay. We'll talk about that here in just a second. When, oh, wrong sheet. I got to remember to do this. And you guys need to re- help me remember because I'm going to forget some of this stuff. And where in the heck, oh, there's the sheet. So many sheets. Team mechanics. When you enter the battle against a dangerous foe as a team, add two to the team pool. All right, now we're up to five. So we're going to deal three back over to me. All right. If the Okay, add two to the team pool. Uh, if the leader has influence over every teammate, add another team. Now, without looking to see who has influence over everybody, who's the leader in this shindig? What's been going what, what In your group's estimation... Who's leading this particular? It isn't who the team leader is, but who's leading in this situation? I think actually Link diving out there first. Re- Renegade interrupt. That has just become like my favorite thing ever. So Link, do you have influence over every teammate? I do. In fact, we can add another team to the pool. The team, the Link has influence over every, certainly every teammate involved. But does anyone mistrust? We'll find out here in just a second. All right, we're up to six. If everyone has the same purpose in the fight, add another team. Same purpose in the fight. Uh, Without it being asked about growth. <laughs> yes. I, I think we're all, we're all behind that cause. All right. So it isn't so much about protecting everybody as much as it is, thank God, the interview is over. 
that's what we're going to be talking about at the end of this. Yeah, when it's all said and done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, we did a great job protecting everybody, but thank God we didn't have to answer any more questions. So in a weird way, everyone is working on the same thing. It's just not the most heroic. But you know what? This isn't about being heroes. It's about, it's about building your team bond. And your team bond right now says no more goddamn questions. <laughs> We're up to team seven. If any team member mistrusts the leader of the team, remove a team. Um, Harry, do you mistrust Link? Definitely no. Okay. I may have a few reservations about him, but in the middle of the fight... All right. I'm not thinking that he backstab or anything of this. All right. Concord, do you mistrust Link? No, he's got a car. That makes him look... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he's had a car since he was younger than you are, not a factor. Uh, of course not. Um, J- Jason, Quill, do you mistrust Link? Um, given a Mercury... All right. Nobody mistrusts Link right now. Link I would loan him money, but um, you don't you don't mistrust him as the leader of the team. But in terms of leading the team into this, there's no question that he's uh, he's he's trustworthy. In your guys' estimation, and I know we've been rolling, we've had some good rolls, but in your team's estimation, would you consider yourself ill prepared or off balance as you go into this thing? No, everyone's diving to avoid the girlfriend. <laughs> It's really yeah, but we weren't really expecting a battle. We were. Uh, then we that, that makes it even better though. We nailed it. You're not. Yeah, you're not. I don't know if you're off. I don't, I don't know. We were. We, have, we weren't taking it you, You're responding well. I'm just wondering if you're responding well, sort of off your back foot, if you see what I'm saying. Well, but, given that we stood around and waited for the window to blow, a surprise. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's not a. It's not a huge. Uh, penalty but i will i'm going to take one point out just because you guys are sort of scrambling a little bit so we'll take away one team point uh we still have a pool of six that is awesome um so no worries there um okay and we're gonna since it's 10 30 man i tell you what this game man it is just suddenly the end of the night um we're going to do one more move now. So here's what's happening. So Harry's out there and he's going into the, I mean, he's worked, he's worked this trick. He's drilled this trick with his mom more times than he can count. And she's talked about all the various things. The problem is, so he's moving really fast and he's, he's starting to suck the air out. The problem is, is that, uh, the challenge or the risk is that in doing this, he is, I mean, he's not everywhere, but he is taking that sonic attack from literally every angle because he's he she's doing she's blasting in all directions and he is in all directions so he is more than anybody else being hit by this so it isn't a simple case of the gm saying hey take this condition um you may be able to totally resist this you might be able it it might be um it might make things much worse so we're going to do a move called take a powerful blow now this is the only honest to god weird move Truly weird move, and we don't have this one in the we didn't we didn't do this one in the Star Wars game, but it's it's actually pretty common in PTBA. This is the only role that works backwards from all of the other roles in the game. Uh, for me, I look at it and say, oh well, that's because it's the role that the GM's supposed to do, but that's it's not the player still rolling. This is a role where you want to roll low because low means that the blow hitting you does not do well. Okay, in the mass community, people are down to spend team over. Yeah, and I didn't see what the answer was. It it, it kind of makes sense to me. I didn't see what the sort of uptake on it was. I I guess if you can come up with a way to help them in some way, I suppose. I didn't see. I have so many screens open. Bill, would you look? Because I saw it was right in the most recent, like, couple of posts. Basically, the theory was to spend team, you must be able to intervene or some way. And if you could do that anyway. I can see that. I can see that. And and I'm not opening up. I'm not really opening things up for the defend move because um, this is a direct result of Harry choosing to put himself at at risk. So in this case, I think he just takes a powerful blow. And I, I, yeah, we've got some other, we got other times for this. So the text of this uh, Mercury is when you take a powerful blow, roll plus your conditions, which means you can simply hit the conditions dice on your, it's up in the top right of your character sheet, and it will count all of the conditions that you currently have. Um, and then you just uh, we'll see what the result is. 
Low is good, but amusingly, rolling low still gets you uh, uh, XP. Uh, how would my never give up and surrender? Let me look, because I don't know what you're talking about. Now, let me look. Uh, never give up, never surrender. When you take a powerful blow from someone with far greater power than you, use this move instead of a basic move. Roll savior on a hit. You stand strong and choose one. Um, it, okay. I, I, I want to make sure that we have the kind of trust that you can believe me when I'm saying this. It would apply if she was scarier than she is, but she is literally on like sort of her last foot and she is not really in your league anyway. This is this is something that comes up when you're like uh, standing against... Dark side? Sure. I mean, he obviously... There, there's gradients to that that's also qualified. It doesn't have to be dark side, but somebody... Let me put it this way. An adult villain. She's your age. Like, she's... She's like in her late teens, maybe early 20s, you know. So cynical. Uh, that is a hell of a good question and maybe something to uh, maybe do some uh, reading up. You would know this if you would actually show up to the uh, villain, the, the, the Gale family briefings on up and coming villains active in the city. I, I was, went, I, went to college I, and took introduc- introduction to philosophy. So. And then she decided that all super. Go ahead. I was doing. Yeah, you had a you had a perfectly good reason for this. So absolutely, that's I'm glad that you remembered that move. But that's when you're. It's really for the, you know, like I'm I'm outclassed and I'm staying in the fight anyway, kind of a thing. It's it's going honestly, yeah, adult adult villains that are um, a little bit tougher than this. It wouldn't need to take mu- it wouldn't need to take much. But if you decide to stand in and take a powerful blow against somebody like that, um, especially for you, it's a perfect move. Okay. So go ahead and go ahead and roll your conditions, and I'll take a look at what we got. I'm excited. I want to look. I want to see. And he rolls a seven. Okay. Oh, so close. All right. When you take about full with the on a seven to nine, choose one of these options. Uh, you lash out verbally, provoking a teammate to foolhardy action, or take advantage of your influence to inflict a condition on somebody else. This is like lashing out in anger. You give ground. Your opposition gets an opportunity, or you struggle past the pain. Mark two conditions. What? Trying to put conditions on? No, no, no. The first part. Foolhardy action. Oh. Book a teammate to foolhardy action. Yeah, or take advantage of your influence to inflict again. See. So you could lash out at somebody like uh, you could say like Concord. You're not even protect. They're not even in any danger. Get out here and actually do something. You could do that kind of a thing. Oh. <laughs> uh, that wouldn't actually give you a cure, right? Yeah. Um, you give ground, which which gives the opposition an opportunity. As the GM, I'm going do that, do that, or you struggle past the pain, and you basically just you you basically do like a kid flash season two kind of thing, and just man up and keep going, even though there's like blood draining, you know, coming out of your ears and nose, and you just man up and take the hit. Sure. It's up to you. Which one? You're saying sure, but all of these are rich with opportunity here. I think they're all awesome. Don't give her an opportunity. Oh, come on. Give her an opportunity. It doesn't say... I didn't say give her an opportunity. I said give the opposition an opportunity. Opposition an opportunity. Um, I think that uh, I'll do man up because it's like, I've seen my mom do this a hundred times. I gotta do it. I, I, I love it. And as 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 like sad trombone as I am about this, I'm absolutely going to go with that. All right, so you struck. Don't do this right. I'm going to have to train you a bunch. Of- <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so you're want more training exercises. Okay, so uh, uh, Harry, you take two conditions from taking a powerful blow, and what can you? I see afraid and angry. I love it. I love it. All right. So, but in the circling and circling in the and the thing, and you basically just get mad the power through it. And when you finally stop, there's almost an audible when when you you stop suddenly and there's this slap. There's this like almost like a a, a son, not really a sonic boom, but like a, a a clap, a thunder clap right there in the middle of the street as the air slams back into this vacuum pocket that you created. Um, the sound is stopped, obviously, and the shock wave of it like kind of 
uh, she had kind of like started to get back up on her feet and she's like basically sitting there. She's not out, but she's on her knees, just head, head sagging arms down. Uh, and honestly, Harry doesn't look like he's a half an inch away from the same kind of position. You're still on your feet, but you are kind of like arms kind of hanging and that, that sort of speedster, I gave it all my got kind of pose where you're sort of like still kind of, uh, you know, still like you're about ready to break into a sprint, but at the same time, you just look like you could drop dead, like just drop, drop into a dead sleep right there in the middle of the street at the same time. Um, and you see, you guys see like a little bit of blood on his face. Um, I don't know what kind of mask he's on, but if you can see his ears at all, there's a little bit there. Um, or bloodshot eyes, something like that. I don't know exactly what his, what his costume's looking like, how, how covered up he is. And we are going to stop right there. Um, and see where things go next session. Luckily, there's been enough noise that if uh, Ghost Girl decides that she needs to rush in to help her friends again, she can. And I need. Are we doing the end of session? Are we, sure are we, gonna... we can absolutely do the end of. Well, let me see if it's entirely appropriate. Um, yeah, we can totally do this. At the end of every session, choose one. Glow, grow closer to the team. Explain who made you feel welcome. Is this for everybody? I think it's for each person, right? At the end of every session, choose one. Grow closer to the team. Explain who made you feel welcome. Give influence to that character and clear a condition or mark potential. Um, grow into your own image of yourself. Explain how you see yourself and why and shift one label up and another one down. Or grow away from the team. Explain why you feel detached. Take influence over you away from one other character. So since Bill asked, I'm going to have him go first. Grow closer to the team, grow into your own image of yourself, or grow away from the team. You can't shift danger up anymore. <laughs> uh, I, I actually feel welcome. Um, I'm not sure if there's any who made me feel welcome, but I would say Link probably felt kind of you know, sympathetic and protective towards Concord earlier, and is definitely...